So without uh, further delay, let's jump um, and get going with the first keynote, uh, with the first keynote um, of the day. Um, and it is a pleasure um, to be able to introduce uh, Javier Solana. So there isn't much introduction necessary uh, with uh, Dr. Solana, um, uh, a chair, uh, a full professor in uh, theoretical physics before joining uh, a very fruitful political career. As uh, uh, John mentioned, the first high representative of the European <clears throat> Union uh, two decades ago. Uh, he is currently the chairman of the Center on Geopolitics and Business at Esade Business School. And he is also the chair of the advisory board of the project Engage, the research project just um, introduced. So without further ado, uh, Professor Solana, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much for, for uh, having uh, uh, this uh, debate uh, this uh, session. I am in love with uh, what you are doing. I was very happy listening to you and, uh, and listening to Wundert, Professor Wundert, because uh, really that is what is needed. I, let, me, let me go back into the 20th century, very late 20th century. One day in the month of September in 1929, uh, four uh, leaders of the European Union, at that time we were Secretary General of NATO, called me for a, a long conversation, let's put it that way. In the long conversation ended up by saying, we need to do something very important in security and uh, capacity building, etc. in the European Union. Will you be ready to take that responsibility? And I said, yes. At that time, I still have uh, five or six years to go in NATO. And of course, uh, we had to agree with Clinton, President Clinton at the time, the President of the United States, to, to, get, to get the Secretary of NATO to move it on into the European Union. I think it was a very good decision, a good decision for me, a good decision for the European Union. And from there on, we have been working, trying to do what we should do, be an important player in the world and having the capacities necessary to place uh, around the world and not only at home in the, in the European in the European Union. So I'm very happy to be here. I will give uh, the utmost that I can to this project. And uh, thank you very much for those who have organized uh, this, uh, this session. Um, I think in the world of today, uh, it's very difficult to see with the uh, difficulty that we have to understand the situation, uh, to, de to define very well what is going to be our needs in, in 10 years from today. So we have to be working with uncertainties of the world uh, as it is. It is an uncertain world and therefore we have to be prepared to construct uh, institutions uh, which are able to adapt rapidly, to be fragile and to adapt rapidly to the situation which are new in the, in the, in the world. Now, let me, let me say a couple of things. I think that uh, uh, the European Union is already a global actor that he has to be a better lower actor. And second, the, the six existing governments for uh, uh, the, the producing the global, the global actor of the European Union are not completely or not quite fit for the purpose of today. So we have to uh, accept and agree that something has to be changed and adapted to, for the world in what we do. Now, if you look a little bit uh, with broader aid, and very nice, and you will see that uh, the European Union is, is already a very important global power. And it's an important global power, for instance, on regulatory matters, uh, the antitrust policies, uh, the data protection regulations, uh, uh, sustainable finances, so many things that we do in which we are leaders somehow in the world. And it's taken, we're taken like that. How can we do? All that engaged uh, and uh, surrounded by one of the circles, the external circle that uh, has been said in the, uh, at the beginning of the panel, which I like it very much, which is the external action plus. We have also to be considered not only the classical external action, but what we have called the external action plan 
in the in the project of the external action plus in the in the in the presentation of the project. Well, three things that I would like to say to to uh, for you to do. It's an advice from effect. Do not get lost in endless and empty reflections. The European Union. And the European Union in this domain, what it needs is action. And we have to learn through action. And therefore, do not get engaged in infinite discussions, but try to, to test, to do whatever, I mean, to test and change, and try immediately to put it into action. The, the very first way that the European Union has moved by action, in particular in this domain. Nobody knew how we were going to be deployed one day in Africa. Nobody knew how would we uh, one day deploy in the, in the Philippines. But all these things have been done. It's have been done for, because the will existed to do it. And when the will existed to do it, the mechanism is always prepared, it's always ready. Or most of the time, it's ready. So please, the use that uh, you are thinking, always having in mind that uh, action is the fundamental thing at the end of the day. Now, the second thing that I would say is that uh, try to start from those uh, low-hanging fruits which are already ready to be used. For instance, uh, uh, PESCO is an important uh, ingredient that you have. Uh, try to see how you can put it to work that which is almost ready, the sooner the better. And, um, and uh, I think that these are two, two, two ideas that I give you in order to, to, to to help you in the in the development of the thinking that you are going to have in three years. But please, please, please keep on thinking always that this is something to be used and to be used for the better of the world and to be used for the better of the European of the European Union. Um, I will stop here because it's really what uh, what I would like to say. Um, keep on going. You are doing a very important job. It's going to be an important project, and I'm sure that by the end of the time, by three years from today, in a different world, probably, we will have an action, a European Union action, uh, external action, which is really a uh, very solid element of uh, what the European Union does in the world. Uh, congratulations from the beginning, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me today. Thank you, uh, Javier Solana. So I forgot to mention, we are going to have Q&A possibilities throughout the conference, throughout today's event. Uh, so please post your questions in the Q&A box that um, all attendees should have, should have access to. Um, right, so perhaps um, uh, let's start off with a, with a fundamental question, uh, Professor Solana. So, um, Perhaps the, the elemental question is, why does the EU need a stronger role in the world? Well, what we are seeing today is a, a world in which uh, uh, it's very, uh, it needs really some kind of, uh, of governance, which is better than the one we have today. I have no doubt that in that game, the European Union has to play. It has to play, it's not going to be an economic uh, fundamental power, not, not going to be a number one, but it's going to be an important power. It's not going to be militarily, we are not going to be an enormous power, but we have to have the elements to act whenever we need it uh, in, in order to maintain peace in the world, which are not going to go to war, but we're going to do to make crisis management, management whatever is necessary. And uh, I think that uh, the more we get, a, low, a world which is uh, again multilateral and with multilateral institutions working well, all the better. And I think the European Union has an obligation to try to construct a better governance in the world. And for that, we need to be a better European Union. And therefore, the time we have ahead, uh, which is not very long, we have to be a better, more useful, more active European Union because we need to have a better multilateral, multilateral world uh, in, the, in, the, in the years to come. In, in your long reign in, as a high representative, uh, 
what what would be the major takeaways, those uh, lessons that you could share with us? Well, I, I, I'll, I think that I have that very clear, is to have in the European Union the possibility of having capabilities for crisis management outside our borders. It was a dream, it was impossible in 1999, when I was talking with that, it was impossible uh, to imagine that that would be possible. But that was possible. And we are talking now to do it better, but it was possible in a number of operations, which uh, you cannot imagine. Let me tell you why. Uh, that was very early. Uh, we had uh, in Ituri in, the, in the Africa, it was a mission of the United Nations that was failing. The country that was in charge of that was Uruguay from Latin America. Kofi Annan and myself, we had a very good relationship because he was trapped in Bosnia. In Bosnia. And he called me, uh, Javier, I need help. This operation is going to fail and I need your help. You can imagine that at that time we didn't have procedures for to do such an operation. <laughs> And we did it. And we went to Italy and we resolved that problem. And a year later, we returned with the mission being maintained by other forces, we were forces of the United Nations. But in operation of that, of that nature in the year at the beginning of the 21st century, it was unthinkable. And I, I tell you, one of the countries that participated in a very, a very important manner was Sweden. And Sweden was the first part that participated in operation like that in Africa, never had been in Africa. From there on, in every operation that the European Union did in Africa, the first country that would step forward was Sweden. That was the experience that they draw from that operation in Italy. But uh, let, me, let me, what other things which we, we really did the transition in Ukraine. We repeated the elections in Ukraine because they were not being right. And that was Putin. And that was, uh, and we did it. And we did it without the institution because it was done by me, but for example, with the help of the president of, of Poland at that time. And we repeated the elections. In Ukraine, it would have been a completely different thing if uh, Julia Timoshenko and Viktor Yushchenko didn't, didn't start to fight a year after they were elected. But it was really a very important action from the political point of view. Uh, when you ask me what else? Uh, in the, in the battle between the, in the, in, during the Olympic Games, in the, the uh, Chinese Olympic Games, you remember there was a battle between uh, Russia and Georgia. And uh, we didn't know how to resolve that problem. But at the end of the day, it was a trip that we did uh, to Moscow and meeting with President Medvedev. And we agreed that the forces from Russia will uh, we have drawn and will be substituted by military police from the European Union. Because as there are three, four countries that have military police in the European Union, and we, France, Italy, Spain, and we took over the Russian drone, and we took over, the, and this is still, this uh, is peace in those wars. So we have been able to do things which are unimaginable. And uh, sometimes we have not been able to do the things which is looks in principle more simple. So um, I think it's a question of will. It's a question of political will. If you have the will, the form to do it is always open. Let me say, now that with the enlargement of NATO, probably with the enlargement of the European Union, more difficulties have appeared. And therefore, I think that uh, as, uh, as has been said, uh, the idea of moving towards some kind of qualification of decision making in matters pertaining to security and foreign affairs is fundamental. And therefore, if we can get out of this a mechanism that can be accepted by the countries to have uh, uh, the possibility of uh, give to this uh, uh, foreign policy, security policy, the capacity of being done by qualified majority, that would be a great, a great, a great achievement. 
Wonderful. Thank you for that um, for that uh, comment. So we start to have quite a few questions in our Q and A box. Um, let me uh, bring two together. Uh, so Jim Close and Federico Steinberg uh, both are asking questions about the transatlantic relationship. So the short term would be, what is your take on what has happened in the last days uh, with President Biden's visit? And how do you see that relationship in the medium term? Okay, let me, let me, let me uh, start by, by saying that I, I, I am a very much uh, fond of the European capabilities. Uh, I think that that doesn't damage, that doesn't perturb our relationship with NATO because the type of uh, operation we will be engaged in our different nation. And in particular today, where probably the action on the military side is going to be not the most important one, but others are going to be more important than that. Uh, therefore, to have capabilities and to have the European Union uh, ready and powerful to do that is good for us. But it's much more important also for the Americans, because the Americans will not have to deploy themselves in places where, as we know very well, they don't want to be. And we may have to substitute the that in the one world, which is, uh, which is recent. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have any sense of doing something against NATO. To have a European Union, which has, uh, uh, I don't want to use the, the strategic, uh, strategic word, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I think we have to do it. And uh, let me let me remind to you something. Or remind no, tell you. The last time I did with President uh, Obama was a meeting in which we talked about this: how we can do it uh, in a manner that uh, they understand, we understand. And uh, I was saying goodbye to the to the the position that I had, and I explained to him what I understood was the, the, the possibility of uh, creating capabilities and creating the, in fact, what we are talking today in a strategic act. Um, the, the end, before saying goodbye and, and, uh, and, and uh, the, 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 from the, the visit, uh, he called me, uh, Call me for a moment, took me aside and say, do it, do it. Uh, it's very important for us that, uh, that we have those capabilities to act. Don't worry, do it. And uh, I, I, I have lived with that sentence. And I don't know if it was true, it was just a, a, a gesture of, of, of support to, my, to myself. But, uh, uh, I think that the one you explain is well, is well understood, it is not bad faith. In good faith, we have to be able to do that. This is not breaking with anything. This is doing better, both the United Nations and the European Union and trying to help this world to be a better place. Thank you. Now a related or often related subject to transatlantic relations is the other big player in the world today, China. So uh, Christian Wilk, from uh, the European Commission asks, um, asks, how do you see uh, the emergence of China? How are you seeing China in the last years in the way it has slowly picked up a, a more, a more um, salient role? And what is your uh, idea of coexistence between the US and China and also in the EU in the middle? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I follow China uh, for many reasons, uh, I have very much uh, in touch with China and, uh, since that you have been. And uh, remember that Tiananmen occurred during our mandate. We were, I was in the mandate of the European Union and we had to do a lot of things to, to put uh, uh, China in this place after Tiananmen. But uh, I think that our obligation is to try to get along as good as possible with the European Union. I'm talking about the European Union now. The European Union does not have anything in theory about, uh, about China, but, but human, human rights. And human rights in the way they are doing it, 
and the, the kind of time managed to, to let them know that you don't like that, but uh, it's very difficult to change it because we don't have the money to change. So therefore, I think that we have to be very clear to China and we have to try to construct what I call a strategic, create a strategic trust. Um, I don't think it's enough to have tactical trust. I think you have to get with countries which are important, partners which are important, you have to have a strategic trust, which is to know where is the limit for them, and they have to know where are the limits uh, uh, for, for us. And as far as uh, uh, you know, we are talking about the European Union, NATO is a different story. I don't think that NATO should mingle with, uh, with, with China. I mean, NATO would not invade for China. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, we will, we should be able to do it. I mean, in, in, in public relations, in foreign relations, we can do three things. Uh, cooperate, Competi com competition, cooperation, competition, and confrontation. With China, uh, I think we have to discard as much as possible the third one. And competition is okay. Cooperation is absolutely necessary. Look at climate change. How the hell are we going to do climate change without China? But we have to avoid, try to avoid confrontation. A confrontation with China, we don't know where it may go. And it's very difficult, it's very difficult. So let's try to construct a strategic trust. It's difficult, it requires time, it requires a lot of effort, but uh, it was possible, it was possible uh, before. And, uh, and uh, so we had to try. And uh, I understand that now the problem is, as I may say with uh, due respect to the United States, is the United States because the division internal of the United States is such that it's very difficult to find something in which uh, the United States as a society uh, uh, is, uh, is they are together. It is the flag, uh, the, uh, the I don't know the cemetery of Arlington, and that is life for China. It is therefore very difficult with the United States today to have a sound relationship with China because it's the only thing in which uh, by, uh, by um, they can to, to try to construct a relationship with the, with the, the GOP party. Uh, and that I think that limits the possibility of a more sophisticated relationship with China. We don't have that limitation. We have to support the United States, no doubt about that, but we have to at the same time try to put a little bit of the tranquility and relaxation on that, of that relationship. For instance, the, the, the agreement uh, that has been signed by NATO, the paragraph devoted to China, I would have done it shorter and if possible, zero. But anyway, that is things that happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so um, perhaps uh, a follow-up question is, uh, where would you imagine, you already hinted at this, but where do you imagine areas of competition with China and areas of cooperation with China? Well, cooperation, no, I mean, cooperation is always. And all the global, <coughs> the global problems, I mean, this is, uh, Climate change. And climate change, uh, I would like it to underline with a big uh, underline. We are going to have uh, in September a very important summit. If in that summit we have a commitment for 2030 that the Americans and the Europeans are ready, Chinese are still, I don't think they are going to be ready to give a commitment for 2030. And then a commitment in 2060, so at the mid and 50, at the middle of the century of zero emissions, uh, that is going to be a fantastic achievement. And we have to fight to get that achievement. Because if we do that, if we have an agreement on climate change in a multilateral organization like a Paris Agreement type, I think we will be able to find another territories where we could do the same. 
try to find in a cooperative manner to find solutions. And we have many. We have many health. We have a tremendous drama with, uh, with the chips, for instance. And uh, the European Union is out of that, but it shouldn't be out of that for a long time. We have to enter into that domain chips and semiconductors. And um, I think that uh, the, the possibilities of finding an agreement, for instance, on that artificial intelligence is, is so important, so important that it will, it's, it's worth making the effort. I, I don't think we have to say no from the beginning. And we have to try to find uh, working hard, working very hard. Uh, uh, Secretary of State Schulz uh, died uh, less than six months ago. Schulz was the Secretary of State of uh, President River. And I met him time back. And I listened the last time, the last speech that he made. He said, uh, and I will never forget it, but this is about six months ago. Uh, remember, Javier, <laughs> foreign policy is like gardening. Foreign policies is to construct, to, to, to garden every day the garden, to, 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 to get all the flowers. You cannot. Uh, uh, that's a single day without talking to your adversary. So it's a lot of uh, work. It's a lot of work. And, uh, but if at the end of the day, how they did, we can find uh, uh, a strategic cooperation and a strategic trust is well worth doing the effort. And I'm not naive, eh? because I have done, I mean, I've been, uh, I have acted uh, very strongly when I was needed, when it was needed. But uh, I think like that. Thank you. Um, related, uh, um, tangentially, is there a role to be played by the European Union in the Asia Pacific region? It used to be very, very important. Uh, ASEAN. Uh, we had uh, a relation with ASEAN a very long time back. And we have participated in all the ASEAN summits, ASEAN plus three with China and with the United States and others. We have been part of that organization for a long time. I do have the impression that we don't, uh, we don't do that much uh, at this point in time. I don't feel it, but uh, I can tell you uh, I have been, I don't know, 20, I don't know how many times I've been in these ASEAN meetings and the ASEAN plus three and the ASEAN plus, uh, and the ASEAN, the, the, the big and important meeting with China, uh, Korea, South Korea one time. So we were there as, as one member. Thank you. Um... Is, what, what, um, is there any region uh, in the world right now where you think the EU should be more present? Uh, we should take a, a more a relevant role than, than at present. No, not region in any, any I mean, history is not written. Uh, the past is written, but or badly written. <laughs> but the future is not written. Therefore, it's, uh, we have to think uh, every day what is the next problem. But I think we have to have a group of people that, uh, even with the difficulties of today, to be thinking about the future. And the European Union should have a, a group of people thinking about, about the future. And uh, for instance, on the, uh, the European Union included, but the Europeans included Switzerland. In pharmaceutical, we have been a very important power. And we have not made any single vaccine. We have, we have had one with the chemistry, the, the, the science, the biology belongs to the I mean, it's European, but the vaccine as such is not. And uh, it's very surprising how we have not been able to have a vaccine. Having what we, I mean, the number of pharmaceuticals that we have in the European Union. So it's been lack of organization. The lack of organization, I think that the, 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 the 
manner in which we, we look at the problems to do it. We don't know how to do. And I think our most important uh, challenge today in this uh, engage also is how to do, how to act. And for me, that is the most important thing that we have to learn. How to act as an important play. How to act. Thank you. Gustavo is asking, going back to the NATO, uh, how, how, is, how is your understanding of the relationship between the EU and NATO today uh, from a temporal perspective? Is it in a good position? Are we talking about a, no. uh, an enriching relationship? Well, I think that it's very difficult to understand the, the relation between the NATO and the European Union without uh, uh, looking at the Trump period. I mean, at the Trump period was a moment in which uh, countries begin to think, my goodness, where, what are we going to happen? What are we going to do? It was a catastrophe. And, uh, but even before, because uh, remember that the only time that uh, Article 5 has been invoked is, uh, is in uh, September 11th, the only time. And then NATO was very engaged, very much engaged uh, on, uh, on Afghanistan. It's true that under the culture of, uh, of, uh, of NATO in part, uh, and United Nations other, but United Nations practically none. Uh, but uh, we have been uh, very, very uh, acting in a very solidarious manner with the United I mean, last uh, time that I look at the number of forces that we have in Afghanistan, we had more forces uh, in the European Union and the American, which are withdrawing. We have still not done the beginning of the withdrawal. So solidarity, it has been there. Uh, solidarity at one level, because we, we didn't have the, 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 capacity, the capability that they, they had. And they, we, don't, we didn't need it because others, uh, they have enough to do all the things that, that they wanted to do. But uh, we were with them, uh, solidarity. But uh, I think it's very, very important to recuperate. But to recuperate NATO, and European Union and NATO, for doing things that we should do. I don't think that if we are going to invent a, a NATO coordinated with European Union and American well coordinated with NATO uh, to talk about China. I, I don't think that this is the, the objective. I don't, I, I think we will make a mistake. Thank you. Another question. Um, another question this time from uh, uh, Mor Sobol from Professor at Tamkang University. Given the changes, and we're given the changes in the US and Israeli administrations, do you, say, do you think there might be an opportunity for improving? the stability of the Middle East uh, region and whether the EU might take uh, a, a more salient role here? Well, I, I always dreamed I would have been possible. I said, you know, I've been engaged in the Middle East. Uh, I, thought I was founder of the quartet. I did everything in years and years and years, but uh, I was very disappointed, very sad. And uh, I think the game, uh, try and make dramatic mistakes. I mean, let me remind you that it was, was probably not, I don't know if you remember that, but it was a summit in which uh, it was the Africa, the, the, the position of the Arab country, the Arab initiative was approved. And the Arab initiative is something very simple. It's recognition of Israel for peace or for mo motion into peace. Uh, that was respected by everybody until Trump. Trump invented this Abraham Agreement in which by paying something and uh, organized that uh, uh, Saudi, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia recognized, uh, that, uh, uh, the Emirates recognized, Morocco recognize creating a big problem for the European Union because the condition that Morocco put for that recognition, Israel 
is really damaging for the European Union, creating a big problem in the Sahel. But anyway, mm, those things uh, are very, I mean, the things that have happened yesterday, and I don't think that uh, President Biden uh, has now the, 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 the energy uh, to put uh, Middle East and the uh, number one of the problems that he wants to solve. I remind you again, the most important problems to unite the Americans is China. And President, China, President Biden is going to do something, China, something, I don't think it's something stupid, but something to really create the possibility of unite the country, and not, not only around China, but China is going to be one of the most important topics where the, 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 the Republicans and Democrats may understand each other. So this is a, it's a big problem. It has to be done, and it has to be done intelligently. And we have to help not to go uh, to the wrong direction. So cooperate, comp comp the competition, cooperation, watch out when you have to go to confrontation. Wonderful. Professor Solana, so thank you very much for your time uh, and, your, and sharing your thoughts with us. We are grateful to have you on board on this project and look forward to engaging and interacting more with you. In the I'm future. very, thank very you. happy with uh, the Regis project. I think you are going to do a great contribution to the European Union future. Thank you.